Inflation is at 7.5%. That is overall inflation. Housing inflation in some markets is 30%. That means housing prices from this time last year have appreciated 30%. Gas is going up like 20%. Food is going up like 30%. Inflation is eating the average person alive. And one of the things that we need to talk about with inflation, because I did a video that average was over. First of all, shout out to all the people who are leaving the well-constructed comments Thank you for my nerdy intellectual tribe. I really appreciate you people. And we're gonna have a very serious conversation about inflation. Because one of the things that people try to do is to buy safe haven assets to protect against inflation. So I'm about to give you a scenario. Let's say you had $10,000 and you bought gold or you bought silver or you bought crypto as your hedge against inflation, okay? At $10,000. What about the rest of your money? The money that you need to pay your mortgage, to pay your rent, to pay your car payment? That money isn't protected against inflation because you have to spend it to live. So what is the best way to protect yourself against inflation? Um, this may sound a little tone deaf but the other night i went to the capitol grill and had a lovely steak dinner and uh was on the date and the bill was like 250 bucks house is more expensive house that same meal would have been close to 300 and that's something i do once or twice a week why do i do that because i am not worried about inflation once again, inflation is handing the ass to the average people. And let's go ahead and have this conversation. You've got to think about what you can create to produce more income. Like one of the things like I'm not even working right now. I'm not even working right now. I do have revenue coming in. I have my YouTube revenue, which is like 10 to 12,000 a month. And that's the money that actually that handles all my bills because my total rent i think my total bills are about seven eight thousand dollars so my youtube money handles my expenses and i don't have to dip into my reserves once again you never ever 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 want to be in a position where you're just pulling money out of savings or investments unless you have a lot of investments say you have an investment block of 5 million and you're pulling off 10% a year, which is 500,000. If you have an investment block of 10 million, that's across maybe real estate, some stocks and stuff where you have a yield and this is the money that your money makes you of say 500,000, that's a game that you can play forever because you have such a significant investment position. But here, here's the thing. I hear people talking about trying to protect against investing, buying silver, buying gold, buying crypto is only part of your income. And that part might be protected, but the other 90% of your income is exposed to inflation. See, one of the things that you've got to do, and this is what I call money, income velocity or money velocity. You create such velocity that inflation doesn't matter. Like, I, I, I don't know what the price of gas is. I don't even look. When I go get gas, I put my credit card in there and I fill up. I don't know the price of gas. Um, I don't even know, like when I go shopping, like I don't even go shopping, I do Instacart. I've not been to the grocery store since I have moved here. So I do Instacart, I just put my credit card in, get gas. I, I am completely, from a personal standpoint, not impacted by inflation at all. 
because inflation hasn't really uh, changed my lifestyle. It hasn't changed. Like I still eat out at very expensive restaurants. I still fill up my gas tank. And one of the th reasons is because this is another thing that I want to teach you guys. I made so much money last year that the money, I have money that I haven't touched because I have income still coming in, but I have money that I can pay all my bills from pay for the whole year, whether I made money or not. And th this is a very different perspective. And this is something that no one on YouTube talks about because they're trying to gas you up with all of this newfangled stuff. They're trying to get you to purchase or join their Patreon, you know, and once again, someone made a comment. It's like, you're one of the only people who, who supposedly has money that doesn't ask for Patreon or cash app. Like, I don't, I don't want your cash. Once again, in the early video, I said, that's chump change. That's chump change. So I'm trying to bring to you a new mindset because if you're the average person, inflation is slapping you upside the head. And it's going to continue to slap you up beside the head until you get money velocity in your life, because that's the only protection against inflation. Like, let's go ahead and say I had two million in the bank, not invested cash money in the bank, which means that I lost 7.5% um, off that two million. So that's like, what is 10%? of a mil of a million is a hundred thousand. So I lost a hundred and forty thousand dollars in purchasing power because that money wasn't invested. Wouldn't put $140,000. I don't give a damn. You want to know why money velocity, because that money that I lost to like, once again, let's go back to my purchases uh, of the Porsche and the BMW. Uh, I lost $200,000 that I spent on assets. Interesting thing, the Porsche isn't depreciating. I can actually sell that Porsche for more than what I paid for it because the mileage, it only has 12,000 miles on it. And uh, it's, I've had it almost two years. So it's not a lot of miles on it. And my BMW did depreciate quite a bit because I paid 72,000 for it. And if I had to sell it today, the most I can get is 55 to 60. So I took a hit on the BMW and at some point, you know, it just depends. Like if I actually drive the Porsche a lot, I will take a hit on that, but I don't care because when you have income, income velocity, money velocity, what does money velocity means? You're making money so fast. And this is something you can do with a small, <laughs> excuse me, a small business. You could have a small business. Let's say your name is John. Your wife's name is Sally. You have 2.5 kids. You have a job. You make 40,000. Your wife has a job. She makes 30 household income. Gross household income is 70,000. And you and Sally have a small business on the side that does 2,500 a month. That 2,500 per month could literally replace Sally's job. But you don't do that because you're stacking money because once again, it, the whole goal is to get money coming in your life so fast that you don't you, you understand from an intellectual standpoint, inflation is a very real thing. The people who are buying these houses at these inflated prices, they're spending real money. It's a very real thing. So you are aware of inflation, but you're not impacted by inflation. Because when I was a kid, gas was like 30, 60 cents a gallon when I was a kid. Now gas is almost four bucks a gallon. And at some point in the future, regular unleaded gas will be five bucks per gallon. That's where we're headed. It's just a matter of time before we get there. So you have an option. You can continue to be the average person and be punched in the face by inflation, or you can do something about it because one of the things that I'm looking at, and I was going to do some drone stuff, but it didn't really fit the mood and the tone of this video. So I'm going to put the drone stuff in there. One of the things 
that you have to understand. And this kind of goes back to my video, Average is Over. You have got to stop being average. I know it feels good to just go to work and come home and veg out and watch videos and just chill out. But at some point that's gonna catch up with you. And you know what's gonna catch up with you? When you're my age, that's when it's gonna catch up with you. Because if you understand how income works, there is a peak. There's what's called peak earning years. And if you don't own a business and you continue to get passed over for promotion, because even in the military, there's something that's called, um, I forget what the term is, but when you've been in a certain pay grade or certain rank and you keep getting passed over, they will kick you out the military. So there is a certain income range that you will top out at and then the only path for your income is down. And this is gonna happen in your 50s. It's gonna happen in your late 40s, early 50s, unless you are a seasoned executive and you continue to get promoted and become a CEO or something like that. Then these guys don't feel that because they continue to groom. Because let, let's talk about when you get to the CEO level. When you become the CEO of a company, there are not that many jobs for you. And there are not that many people with CEO experience. Years and years ago, uh, Citigroup was the largest financial institution on Wall Street. And there was Jamie Dimon, he was like a vice president, I forget the, the guy who was the CEO. And he was an older guy and Jamie left to become the CEO of Chase. And Chase has superseded I don't even think Citigroup exists anymore. But Jamie Dimon is making millions being the CEO of Chase. Millions. So one of the things that you guys have got to understand, average is over. You, you can be average and you can live in a van if you so desire, or you can live in a tent. Or you can be like Timothy Ward and be this wandering nomad of a person working all of these low wage jobs, that is a choice. But hear me and hear me now. This global reset is not going to be playing with folks. It's not. Why do you think, you know, because I, I, every time I talk about, you know, getting married, meeting someone and building a family and people are like, why do you want to do that? You know what people get taken out during the global reset? The single people, the people without families, the people without a network, the people without an organization. Those are the first to go, even if they have money, because they don't have the resource of a network. This is one of the reasons I continued to keep my connections with all these women. I understand being alone is not where you want to be during the global reset. You know, you could go out and get a farm and get 40, 50 acres in the middle of nowhere, right? Who's going to farm the farm? You cannot run a farm by yourself. You cannot run a farm by yourself. There was a guy who was talking about the reset and the farm and he was going to invite three families to come. Cause that's how, that's how many people it's going to take to run that farm. You cannot run a farm by yourself. You cannot run anything that's going to be protective of you during the global reset by yourself. And this kind of goes back to the broken village. We have a lot of people like a lot of these boss chicks. Uh, some of these boss chicks are going to commit suicide because they're so clinically depressed. They're so lonely and they don't understand why they're lonely. And I did a video for Disruptive Male talking about being a leader. One of the big issues that we have is everyone is seeking self-indulgence and they just want to chill and they just want to lay around. And this is something that I consistently hear. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Okay. A world without people who are willing to be responsible is a world that will crumble. 
Like, just go around in your city and check out the parks and the museums. These were things that were bequeathed, bequested to the city by someone who cared, by someone with money, someone who was responsible. So you could go ahead and continue to be irresponsible, avoid responsibility. And I saw in my comment section, a lot of people were talking about the benefits of marriage. So salute to you people, because one guy was talking about he was dealing with this chick. She was super bad, but he realized there was something wrong with her and he didn't he didn't he didn't marry her. He actually married another woman, had two children and he is still married. And this so-called boss chick is alone. Once again, these are the people who are going to be taken out first. The people who are alone, who don't have family, who don't have an organization, who do not have a network. These are going to be the first people taken out by the global reset. And we're already seeing it. We're already seeing it. I was talking to someone I haven't talked to in a while and she lives on the low rent district and she was at the ATM making the deposit and she got robbed got hit in the head, had to go to the hospital and get staples. They stole her wallet and her phone. And then she said, it's the area. Everyone around here is broke, but no one wants to work. Crime is ridiculous over there. It's ridiculous over there. Ridiculous because right now, the people who are alone and poor, in living in bad neighborhoods, the global reset is slapping them upside the head right now, at this minute. Right now, someone has been globally reset. Someone has moved from a house to an apartment. That's, that's a good move. If you could move from a house to an apartment, that's a good move. But they've moved from a, a house to an apartment and the next level is to a van or being homeless. This global reset, is not going to be playing with people. It's not. Inflation is not going, inflation, we've just saw inflation. We have just begun to experience the inflation that's gonna come. The Fed is going to raise interest rates and that's not gonna stop the inflation. It's not gonna stop it because the inflation may go, because conservatively it is 7.5 percent and this is the overall inflation but if you start to get into segmentation and look at housing housing in many markets has appreciated 30 percent in one year that is untenable that can't keep going on because once housing prices gets beyond the reach of people to buy houses then the market's going to collapse and this is one of the reasons the uh, fed is getting ready to raise interest rates and that's just, you know, 30% inflation on the house. You want a house, but you need a house and housing and rents going up and housing prices are going up. Rent prices are going up. Gas is going up. Food's going up. If you notice a trend, everything that you need is going up. Everything that you need is going up. Things that you need, things that you you can't do without. You can't do without housing. You can do without a Gucci sweater, a $1,500 Gucci sweater. That's something you want. That's not going to make any difference whether you live or sleep, but you can't do without housing. You can't do without gas. You can't do without food. Everything that you need is going through the roof and it's not going to stop. It's not. So your best defense is to get as far away from average as you can. Because if you remain an average person, inflation's just <laughs> gonna keep slapping you and you're gonna wake up one day because I, I have someone who's upset with me because um, I'll go ahead and tell it. And once again, for you guys who get upset when I talk about fucking chicks, there's something wrong with you. It is normal for a heterosexual man to want to fuck a woman that that's normal you know well he, he talking about fucking chicks like i'm sorry you ain't getting no pussy that ain't my problem that's your problem solve your problem but 
um, this chick, she was kind of freaky. And um, one of the things she told me that she had participated in a gangbang, seven dudes and her. And at that moment, I was like, this is as far as I'm going with this. We will never, ever get married. You want to know why? One of the things that I've learned about being kinky is there's levels. And at one point I had kind of lost myself and I had to take a year off where I didn't do anything kinky just to reset myself. So when you're dealing with someone that has these proclivities, these tastes, and they don't understand that they need to tone it down, she could be 60 years old and begin to run through with a bang, a gang bang, cause that's just who she is. And I know it. And that's one of the reasons that you know, I continued to see other people. She thought we were in a committed relationship, even though I never said we were in a committed relationship. Never, ever, ever said that, right? And I was like, mm, that's where you are. And this is one of the things that people don't seem to understand. Who you are and the things that you do is one of the things that will define your future. Like, you know, um, I was out there, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Things I would never even think about doing today because once, once again, I got something to lose. I wouldn't do it. And you know, and I got a lot of people out here thinking, you know, Eaglin out there, he out here dating little girls. And once again, uneducated people don't even know the meaning of the word pedophile, but they use it unintelligently looking like a dumbass. A pedophile is someone that likes kids who have not reached puberty, 13, 15, 16, 17 year olds have reached puberty, but you know, that's another thing. But one, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is, and I have been thinking about this new training and it's going to be something a little different. It's going to be different than something I've ever done before, because one of the things I want to do is teach you home economics because I run my personal life like a business and it, everything's a business to me. And this is once again, being responsible people, people don't want to be responsible. Okay. So one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is, you know, with the new training we're going, I'm like, I'm thinking the first part is going to be home ec, home economics, because one of the things you have to do to make yourself beyond average is manage your personal finances very well. I've got like 50 credit cards with nothing on them. There are some people, if they had 50 credit cards, they would all be maxed out and they'd be calling Dave Ramsey. Hey Dave, this is John in Illinois. Hey John, how can we help you? Well, Dave, uh, I made some mistakes. I had 50 credit cards and I maxed them all out. And I'm like, I'm like $200,000 in the credit card debt. And then Dave works through this thing. Cause one of the things that you have to do, like, yes, I have some expensive habits, like going out to eat at these expensive restaurants, driving hundred thousand dollar cars, um, putting premium gas in it, living in a very expensive place. But typically I don't blow money on BS. Like if, I could, you know, like, let me go ahead and give you the framework of starting a YouTube channel. Let's say I went out and bought that Gucci sweater for 1500 bucks, right? Guess what? I get to write that off because I have a YouTube channel and I can slide it under wardrobe. See, th once again, th this, there's so many reasons to go to stop being average. There's so many reasons to start a business. There's so many benefits and perks that you get from starting a business. Like literally, I, I just got a new drone because I realized my old drone, I bought in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. That drone's old and I'm just sitting there because I noticed when I, I lost two drones last year, once again, business expenses. I get to take those as a loss because they were legitimate business expenses. But these drones fly further than my old drone. And I figured that's the newer technology. So guess what I'm gonna do? I have my drone up on eBay selling it and I'm selling my camera $5,000. Which I'm gonna use to pay on the credit card, which I ran up to 7,000 buying this camera 
in replacing a camera and getting this drone. So once again, and th this is one of the things I'm gonna teach you in home economics. So I spent $7,000 upgrading my equipment, right? Well, maybe 12, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but because I had a plan, I'm able to defray those costs because I get to sell my old equipment. This is something that I routinely do. And this is why I don't buy, I only buy name brand stuff. Like this is a polo. I can sell this on eBay for 40 bucks right now. I got this out of a storage unit. Many, many years ago. So one of the things that I consistently do is buy name brand stuff and extract money out of it to roll off into my upgrade purchase. And this is something I've been doing for years. And I don't think I've ever really talked about it on YouTube because everybody's looking to save money and to be cheap as possible. And sometimes being cheap will cost you money in the future because I have a Sony AS7 III, which is a $3,800 camera. This camera was 17, 1800 bucks. The lens, which you notice the, the blurry background, which I so love, the lens was 2200. And once again, I, I'm not saying this to brag or boast because I will spend money for my business. This light was like, let's see. That light was like 800 bucks for that light. I will spend money for my business because my business takes care of me. I will spend money in a heartbeat for my business. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand and understand with um, getting away from being average, living in the low rent district. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna stay in Buckhead. Um, I may go back to Sandy Springs, but I have a good sense of where I will be because I'm not moving to the low rent district. I mean, I can move somewhere else. Let me, let me go ahead and explain to you why I don't live in the low rent district. I literally have between the camera equipment, the lights, the TVs, the guns, I have $50,000 worth of stuff in here that someone, well, the TV, they couldn't run off with the TV's 85 inches. They couldn't run off with that. But TV was like 2000. Let's go ahead and say I have $48,000 worth of stuff that someone could come in here and grab and walk out with. My laptop, my cameras, the lights. I have a lot of stuff, the drone. I'm, once again, I'm buying a backup drone because I never want, you know, because one of the things I, I do, like I have uh, the computer, the Apple, uh, Apple Pro in there, the Apple, uh, I, I always have a backup, like, if my computer in there crashed, I have a laptop that I can do my work. I will never be in a situation where if, you know, and I remember this from a girl who was supposedly making all this money and her laptop crashed and she was, in, I'm like, why do you have a backup laptop? See, that's one of the things I don't understand because people who are like, everything that I need, because I have two cameras. I have this camera and I have another camera. So everything that I need to produce content, to produce online courses. I have a backup. I will never be in a situation where if my computer crashed, I can't work. No, 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 no. I, I have a backup for everything because this is business, baby. This is business. You buy and institute things to protect your business. Being average, being normal, running your life in a normal manner, that is not the way that you wanna go. That's not, and this is what the training is gonna be doing because one of the things we have to do is get into the foundational training. Like, there are things that I do that I don't really talk about, like this whole thing of only buying name brand stuff because that sounds like, oh, he's just, no, because like, let's say I bought that Gucci sweater and once I got tired of it, guess what? It cost me 1500, I could probably sell it on the secondary market for seven, 800 bucks. You cannot do that with some stuff from Target or Walmart. You can't do it. And in many markets, like Bathing Ape, look up Bathing Ape. Frequently, the when the shirts reach the secondary market, they sell for more than they did in the primary market because Bathing Ape is a very interesting company. They make these limited edition shirts. They, once they make this t-shirt, 
They don't make no more. And once they sell them out, only place you can get that t-shirt is on the secondary market. And there are people who will buy these t-shirts from Bathing Gate in the primary market and then immediately put them on the secondary market and make two, $300 per shirt. Immediately, immediately. So one of the things that we're gonna get into is economics, home economics, and then we're gonna get into some business stuff and then we're gonna get into some masculine frame stuff. Cause like, like I said, my break's almost to an end. Cause today I made not one, not two, this is the fourth video that I made today. And I might make a fifth one. Uh, Cause essentially what I'm gonna do since now that I've divested myself of the car rental business, now I can start focusing on my YouTube business. Now I can start focusing on the online course business. And I may start doing, you know, cause once again, I don't really push the consulting. People just find me. I really don't push that because once again, I don't like my time spoken for before I even know what my, you know, I don't want to wake up and it's like, oh, you have a console at 10 o'clock and I had all these other things uh, planned. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand is inflation is going to keep slapping you upside the head as long as you remain normal, as long as you have a regular normal income streams. And that's that right now in this inflationary environment, and once again, layoffs are coming. Massive layoffs are coming. We already had a bunch of layoffs during Christmas and I'm gonna check the unemployment numbers for February because you know, February is almost over and we will see what happened in February. We will see what things have come to pass because what I feel and everyone is starting to agree with me, we're heading toward a recession. I feel 2023. It may happen in 2022 around Christmas time, which will cause a lot of pain. Now, I know it's like, Glendon, you keep saying we're gonna have a recession, but you keep staying start a business. Absolutely. Best time ever to start a recession a business is during the recession. People are on sale, rents on sale, materials on sale. Everything's on sale. Advertise. Everything's on sale during the recession. It is the perfect time to start a business because everything's on sale and you have less competition because everyone is scared. Everyone's like, oh, it's so bad. It's so horrible. Yet I'll be eating steak. I'll be eating steak during the recession. I will continue to do what I'm doing because one of the things, and this is something that I haven't talked about. I have a financial war chest. I have money set aside in case all hell breaks loose. And like y'all like, you know, going to Cameron, we don't like you no more. We're not buying any of your products and stuff. I'm set. I can weather that storm. But can you weather a $400 repair? See, that's one thing I'm trying to get people out of that mode of having no money because uh, the real estate trapper, he put out a video, why you broke. And I agree with him. He talks about everyone's telling you not to save money. He's like, you need some money. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I forgot to comment on that video. Because one of the things that people don't understand is you're listening to these YouTubers and I've seen video after videos, take your money out the bank, invest your money, right? For the average person, that is bad advice. The average person needs 10, 15, 20, $30,000 cash somewhere, not in an investment, but cash money somewhere. And then, they, then that's the first step. Then the second step is to be out of debt. And then the third step is to invest. If you've got $30,000 in the bank, you have no debt, and then you can invest 1500 bucks a month, you can win an investing game. But once again, everyone's like, well, yeah, you know, go out and buy gold to protect yourself against inflation. That's foolish. That is foolish because only the money that you have invested in gold will protect you against inflation. The reality is that most of your money is not protected against inflation. So what's the goal? Make more money as fast as you can. That's the protection. Because like I said, inf inflation, one, at one point, gas is going to be five bucks a gallon. That's going to be the reality. So understand what is coming and understand what is on the horizon. So you can continue to be sitting like a duck waiting for inflation to ravage your money, or you can do something about it. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know. Once again, the new training and stuff is coming. 
I'm probably going to start doing live streams on Kung Fu Kung Fu because, like I said, I'm coming off my break. I'm getting ready to start going hot and heavy with the content creation here on YouTube with all of my channels because uh, I'm going to tell you the plan. Essentially, I'm going to have a content creation day where I will create videos for all of my channels and then I have a um, online course creation day the next day and then I'll just alternate those days and then take the weekends off. That's the plan. So let me know what you think and I will see you guys. And once again, thank you to my, and I'm gonna have some swag. I'm gonna have some swag. I don't know, I, I might do, cause like Nerd Tribe, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna have some swag. I'm gonna have some stuff for all of the wonderful people who are coming here, commenting, supporting the channel, which I really appreciate. So just be on the lookout for that. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.